Oh, gee. Well, it'll take time. Oh, they're in the top. That's quite heavy. Oh, really heavy. Oh, so, really heavy. So, oh, now we're in for a race, ladies and gentlemen, Daniel. because, well, you know, G's been down. He's set a great time, but some of the real big guns are still left at the top. All of them, really. So, Patrick yeah. Tone now making his down through the rain. See if he's shaking his head there as well. The worst thing when it's coming down just like this, it just messes with your vision a little bit, gets all over that goggle lens. But look, uh, look how rough that track is. <laughs> it looks incredible from that angle. So the Stad Scott rider comes from Nîmes near Marseille. First year on this team. Had a best good. World Cup result here a year ago, when he was 13th, Cunny and he's a, actually unlike Brendan going big off there. Running that 650B wheel, which I would have thought would have been a big advantage on a course like this. Fast and flowing. Yeah, his team managed to cloud. Out. It's cloudy out. We saw doing the uh, track ride. Said that 650B wheels on this sort of track where it's fast rolling and a lot of these bumps, as you can see in this section, the bike's got to get over. Might be a big help. Oh, also, yeah. Someone like Andorra actually said brought up an interesting point. It's where you're relying on the braking and you're relying on the wheels to drop into the braking bumps for the braking. The 650B wheel is rolling over them when you're needing it to brake for. Yeah, so maybe a disadvantage last, last round, which there's an advantage this round. Oh, Tobe looking super fast through there, though. Actually gave up a career as a go-kart driver. Is that that's a professional word? Teaches people how to drive fast cars on, on racetracks all week. Take up mountain biking, so I bet he's been down the uh, local track all week. The legendary Boston Man go-kart track, where um, it's almost as competitive as the racing on the hill today. It's more so. It's more <laughs> expensive for the owner. Man, I don't know how he puts up with it. He needs to take the positives off people. Stuff just getting broke. Five seconds back then for Patrick Tyler, just that Scott Ryder. But, uh, you can almost see, actually. Oh, oh yeah. I tell you what. You know, someone's online on that part protection. It's okay. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. But you get an inch or two left or right, that could be in real big trouble. We're starting to see that now as well. As these fast riders really starting to crack on into that section. So, 13th for it, 5.9 back. It's also one of the parts of the course where, in practice, there's a bit of a pedal before it. You tend not to sprint at it because you want to save your legs. I don't know about everyone else, but for me back in the day, it used to be quite a shock when I'd put a few pedal strokes in. Well, I, was, I don't remember that being like that. <laughs> Saves all the energy for the race run. You can see here, just getting bucked Ooh. a little bit out to the right and then oh, pressing his line. Big impact there, big hole forming. Still the raining at the top. top. Josh Bryceland, young British rider. Uh, Santa Cruz Syndicate. Oh, boy. So, at his this, best, go on, Cunning. Yeah, I was going to say the same as you were going to say. His best result here in 2011. Second Are you looking place. at my notes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just cheating, Rob, over your shoulder. So, yeah, just Bryson knows, loves this track as well. Two times in the top ten so far this year. Of course, a good course for the tall, wow. lanky Mancunian. He's having a, had a great week here. Oh, look at him holding that tight there. Staying well inside that berm. He looks quick down there, Cuddy. Frighteningly fast for Josh Bryson and then. So he's going to come up to split number one shortly. Getting some pedal strokes out of there as well. It's bush. Looking fluid on the bike. Sucking it nicely into those berms and then keeping it low over the jumps. Looks a little bit slower than G down this section, actually. Yeah, 1.9 back. 62 kilometers an hour. Nearly 63k for him through that speed trap. As he now darts into this big left-hander and fires it into the trees here. So what's he got for us as he comes now down through this difficult rock section? 12th here in 2012. Yeah, look like he might have gathered up a little bit in those holes. Yeah. Interesting to see. Oh. Nice, it's got punch. I thought he looked a bit slower. Something's up. The wheel's collapsed. Yeah, the wheel. Wheel yeah. broke. Oh. Yeah. I thought actually he'd eased off. He came like into it. that. He looked like he was cruising and being a tall rider, he can sometimes have that sort of a style, but... He's hit something hard with that back wheel, and that's the result there. You can see it for yourselves. Really? Broke a load of spokes out of that wheel coming in. You know, easily done it. This course just can destroy bikes. Yeah. We're seeing here. Real shame for Josh. He was Could looking good. He's got that wheel back, like. all over the place. Probably it's... thought he had a punch, I'd imagine. Him. Oh, you can see the wheel up there. As far as he could with it, but uh, so many hard hits. Oh, Ooh, look at that. Broke her. <laughs> Thankfully, it locked up there, not on the high speed section of that wheel crashed over and went against the seat stay the chain stay there so well that's a real shame for josh bryceland yeah could I have been where a good he did that as him. well yeah could well have been yeah shame so there's your top three at the moment g atherton in the hot seat in the driving seat brendan fairclough in second and needles there giant rider in third spot 
<laughs> Gee, what do you say? <laughs> that rain's coming. Oh, and there he is. Fingers it's crossed, Gee, fingers crossed. <laughs> so, Matt Simmons, I'd hate to win a World Cup because it rained. That'd be a terrible <laughs> thing to happen. I mean, how would you live with that? Uh, it'd be difficult. Milk it, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but Matt Simmons, up the... <laughs> <laughs> Matt Simmons up top now. Great rider. He's been riding incredible this year. And it just hasn't been coming together for him in the final. Spoke to him this morning and he said, you know, it's just been like sort of bad luck, mechanicals or little silly mistakes that have just been going wrong for him. He's definitely got the pace to step it up. He is another one of these guys, Cuddy. You know, there's a few of them. But, you know, you walk the course of practice and you see him ride and they are so fast. Simmons actually fourth at split one in Andorra in the last round of the World Cup. And, you know, people talking about how fast he was going in Fort William before he got that puncher. And it's just a matter of time going big off yeah, there. You can see him just the edge, jumping yeah. out onto that grass on the left of the screen. And he's looking 2.9 back for him, trying to avoid the big braking bumps, the big jelly bumps. You don't want to be landing in those at those sort of speeds. So, uh, but uh, yeah, 2.9 back for him. But, you know, he is a guy that just needs to put a run together. Yeah, and the good thing with Matt is he doesn't let it get to him too much. He really keeps positive about it and knows that he's got faith in his ability on the bike and can just keep going. And sooner or later, it's going to pay off for him. So, running that new uh, chain reaction bike, Stacey and Dewey's a prototype, the, the new proof team working on it, 12.5mm longer front triangle, and uh, well, actually Sam, the only guy who's gone for a shorter back end as well, Sam will of course be out in action, his teammate, a little bit later on, but he'll go for a short chain stay on the bike as well, to uh, try and encourage it to turn even more, he'll run in a 62 degree head angle, and so is <laughs> You know, I think the, as the courses get faster, and I think they are, and the, the, the yeah. racing the bikes are getting quicker, then it seems to be now that the wheel length, the wheel base length of all these bikes seems to be getting bigger and bigger as they try and keep up with the speed. So, Simmons, safely over the last two jumps, and he goes six, 4.4 back for Matt Simmons. Good run. So, yeah, still a good run for Matt, but shaking his head a little bit there. Maybe the rain... Now you can see it here, just as I'm starting to mention it. Maybe the rain making the course yeah, a good bit point, slower up course, up top on the course, and uh, riders coming down a little bit disappointed that they've been caught out. Well, by it messes for your head coming, you know. All of a sudden you're like, oh man, you know, everyone else went down the dry. Yeah. You got teardrops, sorry, raindrops. You might have teardrops. <laughs> you got teardrops on the inside, raindrops on the outside. Because <laughs> you're so good, it's decided to ride on you. We're <laughs> getting all romantic in the commentary booth. So, Marcelo Guterres from Colombia, new signed into the giant this year, and definitely, without a doubt, a man on the up. And his first top 20 in a World Cup here a year ago where he was actually 20th, 10th of the World Championships, and of course, bursting into the uh, top 10 in Andorra this year. So, let's see what he can do. Big, powerful rider, Cunny. Yeah, great Last rider. down there. Currently sat 13th in the series. So, Marcelo really wanting to step it up and make himself a permanent fixture in that top 10. Loving being on this new giant team. Everything about it. He's got two fast teammates there. And he think loads of experience from Danny Hart. 2.9 back for him then. Sorry, Cunny, 65 clicks through the speed trap though fast through it you can see how much rain there is it's on the lens of the camera there this is interesting yeah it's hard to see it on screen i'm looking out the window not too bad hopefully it's just a shower you can see those rocks still looking nice and dry it doesn't to me look like it's affected the course too much just yet so Marcelo there i would say a mistake to run down into the bottom of that turn there and then have to uh, get back around that turn oh. turn left so you want to be straight lining it but uh, Let's see, 2.9 back and split number one. What's he going to do in split number two? And the thing with the rain, actually, is a lot of these rock sections, like we see here, where there's all those rock slabs, really lose the time if they get all slippy, are in the woods, so they'll be the last to get hit by the rain. Whereas these open sections, they'll absorb a little bit. They're more dusty, so it may not affect the course as much as we're fearing it might be. No, if it stops now, I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. So he lost the time there between split one and two, went to 4.8 back. But uh, you know, a legend in Colombia. I don't know if Colombia is in South America or Central America. Let's say it's in South America. I think it's it's uh, it is. Is it? Yeah. Okay, cool. We <laughs> never a small uh, strong point. Four point one back for him. Mountain biking booming down there as well, and uh, certainly someone like Marcelo, a big part of that. Yeah. Look at this section there. We can see that. I think that's where uh, Josh got unstuck. 
getting pushed out a little bit wide. That's what we were saying about the women taking the straight line through there. So two balls there for Marcelo. Now back up to top, we've got Nick Beer. So the Vinci World Racing. Teammate Steve Smith, of course, fastest qualifier here this afternoon. But Nick Beer having some good riding, definitely on the up as well. Just uh, growing in confidence. I spoke to Gabe before the race, the team manager, and he said, yeah, Beer is fast. Oh, no. oh. Is that a commentator's curse? Not really, was Not it? Really, no. I'm saying how fast he's <laughs> going. Well, you can see how quickly go, things go wrong. Let's hope that wasn't due to the rain there, Tony. Just making that a little yeah. slicker. Hard to say from here. Still looks pretty dry. But this course, this mountain's so big, it could have rained a lot harder at the top than it has at the bottom. It's definitely yeah, you a can possibility. See a little bit of blurring on the lens here. That would just be the raindrops in between the camera and the rider. And he's been on the World Cup podium twice. as Nick Beer. Fifth in Hafiel last year. Of course, there were three Da Vinci Park riders. On the podium, only three put one back, and he was on fire then. Yeah. He lost a lot more than that in that crash. But it's only stopped, picked yourself up, and got going and back up to speed, man. You know, I'd say any crash is worth more than that, really. And he looks fast. This is where I saw him in practice. Look, just confident, straight line in it. That bike's going exactly where he wants it. High on the exit across there as well. That gives him great exit speed. Well, that's one of the best rides I think we've seen through there. What a shame that he crashed at the top. Yeah, finished last year in 14th place in the series. So, knows he can do it, wanting to step up into the top 10 this year. But that little mistake at the top, you can see from the dirt on his knee, really costed him. Had some big injuries over the years, a long time ago now. He, uh, he busted his hip, a broken wrist in 2011. So, 4.6 back for him there. Well, that's a shame for uh, Nick Beer. I think, thankfully, Neil, looking out the window, hard to see. I think it's stopped raining, Cuddy. It's looking dark out there. It does look dark out there, though. Yeah, we really don't want to see any rain now. This close to the end of the finals here at round four. The UCI Man Bike World Cup, presented by Shimano. From here, the legendary Bonson Man in Canada. And uh, we hope you're enjoying the racing. It's fast and furious as ever as we see Nick Beer get this turn wrong. Oh, I don't like that. Pole almost sent his weight back. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, he ended up just sat too far back over the back wheel. Not 